general election is Tuesday. There have been a mixed bag of offices on the ballot this year. At the top of the ticket, there are a handful of statewide offices, starting with the Secretary of State down to state house races and a handful of county-level jobs, including the county council, sheriff, and the, the assessor, all the way down to township trustee. Uh, to highlight some of the significant contests that we'll see on Tuesday, we have Hobart Mayor Brian Snedekor, who is a Democrat, and we have uh, Andy Quinnell, who is the uh, treasurer for the Lake County Republican Party. Welcome to both of you. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. All right, so we were bipartisan here, one from each. What, uh, when you look at the ballot uh, for Tuesday, what, what seem to be the uh, races that are really drawing the most attention this year? Well, uh, certainly, um, I, th I think some of the county races, but I think some of the state races uh, in Lake County have become really uh, interesting to look at. And, and as we get close to the finishing uh, line, I think we're going to see. Um, I think we're going to see a strong turnout, certainly of the Democratic vote. Um, certainly, over in uh, Porter County, I think uh, there's going to be some interesting races that are going to go down to the wire. We're, uh, such as like uh, the race between Ed Soliday, incumbent Republican out of Valparaiso, who's yes. facing off against Deb Porter. Yes. Uh, yep. A lot of money being spent in that race. It looks like they'll spend upwards of $100,000 each in that race. And for a little statehouse race, that's a lot of money. I, uh, I think it, I would put it north of uh, 100000 each because okay. well, they're buying TV commercials. Yeah. That's, not, uh, that's not cheap. That's, yeah. uh, that's some expensive media. So what are the issues here in that race that's drawing that kind of money? Well, I, I think that the Republicans uh, see that as a, um, as a key race in the region. Um, you know, Ed Soliday is certainly someone that uh, is looked up uh, with a lot of respect in the region. Uh, he's been able to cross the aisle and get things done um, in Indianapolis. And uh, I, I think that the uh, Republicans are, are trying to spend a lot of money and see uh, what they can do as far as making that interesting race. So a lot of money is being spent in the race between Ed Soliday, re Republican uh, incumbent out of Valparaiso, and Deb Porter. She's uh, uh, the Democrat in that race, challenger. It could be more than $100,000 spent in that race uh, on each side, which is a tremendous yes. amount of money for a state house right. race. W what are the issues here? Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I think one of the issues that Deb Porter's bringing up is uh, is education. I think her background is education. She's yes. a she's a teacher, and I think they're they're going after um, Representative Saladay on that on that issue. Um, you know, Representative Saladay has been a solid representative for um, Northwest Indiana. I think he's represented the uh, the area well, and I I think they're trying to find the Democrats found a good candidate, and they're trying to put as much behind him. Uh, as, uh, behind her as they can mm -hmm. to uh, have a successful day next Tuesday. Because Porter County has become a little purple here. There, there, yes. there are a lot of Republicans yeah. still in Porter County, right. but also a lot of Democrats. Are there. So it's much more of a swing county yes. than it used to be in, in years past. Yeah. Yes. And Republicans are, are also trying to hold on to their historic uh, uh, super majorities. Right now there are so many Republicans in the House that they don't even need Democrats uh, in the chamber to, to take action. Uh, and they need, what, three votes the Democrats would have to pick up to break that supermajority in the House. Yeah. That's got to be a factor in this, in a lot of these races, as a matter of fact. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Fair. you know, I, I, Ed Soliday, I've had a, an opportunity to work with him closely, work with him on NERPC and, and other, other um, uh, undertakings. He's a quality individual, a good guy, not afraid to reach across the aisle and and work together with both both parties, uh, but yeah, I, I believe there's this is a good candidate that's been uh, pitted against him, and I think it's going to be a really close race. And I and I I think this all falls down to it's an it's an off off election, who uh, which party gets out the votes, and uh, you know you, you got Valpol that brings out a lot of Republican votes, Portage a lot of Democratic votes, and like we said earlier, Chesterton. There's a lot of potential independent type votes that could uh, impact this election. And, and turnout could be really tough this year because at the top of the ticket, you've got the Secretary of State, which is not exactly that, <laughs> that exciting. Right, uh, right. Usually right. there's at least a U.S. Senator at the top yeah. of the ticket, but because they run in those six year cycles, not this right. time around. So is it really going to, are both sides having a tough time people, getting people excited this time around? I, I would say yes. I was actually, you know, to speak to your comment, I was at an event this week. 
and somebody said that, you know, in the state of Indiana, election cycles go in 12-year cycles. And we are at the low point of that 12-year cycle where we don't have a senator, a governor, a president, anything, any high office on the ballot. So Secretary of State, I mean, if we walked out of, you know, out of this room and went to another, went and asked 10 people who their Secretary of State was, how many of them do you think would know Connie Lawson? You know, and that's... Right. So it's really tough to, it is a hard thing to get people excited, to get them out and, and get them motivated. And uh, it is going to be a matter of which party gets their votes out. Even though a lot of these guys are on the ballot this time around, they're the ones that control the purse strings. There's a budget that'll come up next year at the state house. Mm -hmm. uh, at the county level, they, you know, the county's always making uh, their yearly budget. Yes. Uh, a couple years ago, they ended up, well, in the last year, they ended up voting for a county option income tax in Lake County, the last county in the state. That was supposed to be the, the third rail of local politics in Lake County. And But in the end, does it look like that's going to be a major issue come Tuesday? I, I have not heard that as being a um, make or break decision as far as the voters. I believe as time has went on, uh, communities using the funds wisely. I think the voters, although there's still a lot of, of um, apprehension about it, I think that communities have shown uh, to the residents that the money, if it's used wisely, can actually see a benefit. And, and that's one of the things we've tried to do in Hobart is take the uh, two quarter percents and use it for what its intended purpose and let the, the, the people see that their money is being reinvested in their community. In, I would agree with you on the local level, yes. but I think on the county level, I think people are still very upset about it because it was implemented by, by the county council and, uh, and the commissioners and one of the commissioners who said, of course, he would never vote for the income tax. However, I think you know when they still can't balance their budget, people still see this as you brought this tax upon us and now you still can't balance your budget. So I think that that's still an issue out there. I hear it every day. Um, I don't think it's as much in the forefront. I don't think it's as much in the forefront yeah. in a lot of the municipalities because a lot of these municipalities operate in more of a, um, uh, they have better control of their budgets. Let's, let, me, let me just put it that way. But you had yeah, David Hamm, yeah. who was appointed to the county right. council last time around, voted for the option income tax. Is he really facing a very serious challenge this time around? Um, not really, no. And I mean, but part of that is that's a district, I mean, that, that district runs up into East Chicago and Whiting. That's not a really conservative district. I would have thought that somebody on the Democratic side would have come out against them because even the Democrats were really upset when the, when the tax passed. So much for the third rail of Lake County yeah. politics, it sounds like. <laughs> you know, what it will be interesting is if there's a primary against Mr. Repay in 2016 and how that would go. The commissioner. Yes. Right. All right, so what are some of the other races we need to look at? There was uh, four years ago, the assessor's race, of all things, was a huge yes. deal when yes. Hank Adams, the only Republican to hold uh, countywide office in, a, in a, more than a generation, was, a, was elected. Uh, now you've got uh, his appointee or... The person that was appointed to replace him, Julie, Jolie Kovacci, is it? Kovac. Kovac. And she's running up against Jerome Prince, the Democrat. Mm -hmm. He's giving up his county council seat to go after right. that. Yeah. Is this going to be close? I, you know, based on qualifications and how hard Jolie's working, historically, of course, this would not be a close race. I, you know, let's, but I, uh, I think it's going to be an interesting race to watch. I think it's going to be closer than people can imagine. Um, I think Jo Lee has done an excellent job. She's very highly qualified. I hope people remember that, you know, up until Hank Adams came into office, we never got our uh, our tax bills on time. So, you know, we don't, we'll, that'll be an interesting race to see at the end of the night, but, uh, you know, the benefit does go to the Democrats on that one. <laughs> I think he's on point. I think uh, Jerome Prince has, has served the, the uh, county well. Um, I've had an opportunity to work closely with him. He's a man of integrity, and I think that given the opportunity to serve, uh, he'll do a good job. Um, you know, and I, and I think this is certainly uh, the Democrats will come out strong, and I, I think the North, North County will pave the way for Jerome to, to be victorious. So what are the other close races we're going to see? What are the ones that are going to go deep into the night? Well, I think Shelley Vandenberg, um, that's been a race where the Republicans have pumped a lot of money in to uh, try to give this a race to the finish. 
I think Shelly's another example. She's fought hard for education, fought hard for, you know, veterans. I, I think she'll end up pulling this out, but I know she's not taking this race lightly, and I think she knows it's going to be it's going to be a competitive race, and I think she's working hard to. to uh, That's another one of those purple districts. Yeah. In this well, one in South Lake County, and, and we have a great we have a great candidate there, Julie Altoff, who's yeah. doing an excellent job. She's been a small business owner, a lifelong Northwest Indiana resident. Um, I think she's doing great. And if the polling numbers weren't there, well, there's two more that have commercials on TV that you can, you know, again, right. it amazes me of these state rep candidates and you can be yeah. watching network TV, <laughs> Chicago network TV. Now I know they, they, they have a way I think of, that's cable, but okay. It is cable, yeah. but you know, they, they, they have a way of pumping this in and they can put in the, uh, you know, these Northwest Indiana, um, candidates for, you know, their commercials. It's, yeah, it's no question, come election night, Northwest Indiana will play a real key role, maybe not in control of the Indiana House, but whether or not that supermajority stands in yeah. the Indiana well, House. And there's five competitive races going on here for the House right now between, the, you know, your Ed Soliday, who's in, so I can't remember what district his is, do you? But over, over in Valparaiso, yeah, then we have yeah. Jim yeah. Weezer yeah. and Hal Slager and Jim Weezer. That's another race. Right. So yeah. there's a lot of them there. Well, we'll have to stay tuned election night. But in the meantime, thanks to both of you. This has been uh, Andy Quinnell. He's the treasurer for the Lake County Republican Party. And Hobart Mayor Brian Snedekor. Thanks to both of you for being on. Thank Glad you. to be here.